of a, uh, let, let's say a trade of wham a jam a firm. Your company is now the premier wealth advisor company in the world. Mm. How were you able to do that? Well, what, firstly, we had a view. Right? You have to start with the point of view. And the view was that a separate trading banking business on its own was much less attractive because of its volatility to investors. So we needed some annuitized fee business. We had it in the old Dean Witter business and a smaller asset management, but they weren't at scale. So the view was there is that we knew what the answer was, but we had to get the scale. So we bought Smith Barney back in 2009. Uh, we bought E-Trade, we bought Solium, we bought Eaton Vance, we bought Mesa West. All of these were building blocks to get us to scale. So it was, it was actually a very simple concept. Executing it required, you know, we had, to, we had to make some calls and some people thought we'd ever pay for some of those assets. I don't think so anymore. But there, these are assets that are sticky yeah. and they go up, up, up. The old days, you were what I regard as an episodic firm. Those days are not bad. Well, I think it's all about stability. I mean, if you look at the wealth businesses, which generate, um, you know, roughly $6 billion a quarter for the last couple of years, look at those businesses. They, they, they don't move very much in their daily numbers. I mean, plus or minus 5 million on 100 million. So incredibly stable, sticky, but also stable when you've got them. And we love that. But then you've got the investment bank, which is like a turbocharger. When the markets are good, the bank is doing phenomenally. But at the same time, uh, people all lump these together. They say you have investment banking, investment bank doing poorly, so why don't we just sell this stock down? It's not any different from the way it used to be. That's just not a fair characterization. Well, Chip, it's, it's honestly just not looking at the numbers. Okay. I mean, some people have looked at and, and said because of the investment banking market and the capital markets market at the moment, which is tough, right? Because of that, uh, these stocks are much less attractive. I say, seriously, take a look at what percentage of the revenues that with, we have that are tied up in those kinds of activities that are depressed right now. By the way, they're delayed. They're not shut down. Right. Uh, they're going to happen. Companies will go public. Deals will get done. So I'm not concerned about it at all. I think, at, you know, where the stock is trading in this environment, obviously I feel very good about what we're doing. Well, obviously because you've been buying back more stock than anybody else and you've been returning a uh, nice dividend. You've got the best in the group. And we're retiring, we'll, we'll retire, you know, 6 7% of stock this year, and we've got a dividend yield of 3.5%. So shareholders are getting a 9-plus percent return without getting out of bed. It's not bad, right? So I feel very good about the position. We should bring the share count down. We started after the E-Trade Eaton Man deals around uh, 2 billion shares outstanding. You know, my target will be down around 1.5, 1.6. Oh. And, uh, you know, then you're paying smaller dividends because you're not paying dividends on the shares you retire. Now, there was a time when if you told me that Morgan Stanley was going to own E-Trade, I said, I would say, are you kidding me? Yeah. But it turns out that the wealth is in Solium and E-Trade. That's where it starts. You are going for the long haul. These are people who, if they save well, will become the premium wealth clients for the next 20 years. Well, and just give a call out to E-Trade. They just got rated the number one online brokerage business uh, yesterday uh, by Clippingers, which is, is great. No, listen, we, we, we owned the financial advisor piece, bang. Second leg, we needed to own the direct piece. Schwab Ameritrade, phenomenal companies, Fidelity, we needed to be in there. We could build it or we could buy it. We bought E-Trade. Third leg, we want to own, or at least be, uh, one of the top two competitors in the workplace with Fidelity. And through Solium and E-Trade, we've got that. So we're now managing something like 30, 35% of S&P uh, stock plans in this country. So if you've got all three legs, you're getting people through advisors, you're getting them through trading online, and you're getting them through uh, their workplace, you can provide incredible capability to them because you're amortizing across a huge fixed cost. No, but the you, revenues, I'm but sorry. you're not getting away entirely from risk. We know it's difficult. I know you can't talk about individual clients, but you, you've got a big one, Elon Musk, and he may end up owning, uh, uh, he may end up owning Twitter, and you could be on the hook for that. Is that true or not? Well, I, as you, I think you said it, I can't talk about it, Jim. But, you, but we don't want you, you on the hook. You, 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 you know, shareholder doesn't want you on the hook. Do, do I look distressed right now? No. Uh, okay. That's, well, all, that's all I'll say. We'll see how this plays out. Well, I, I like I like that attitude. Now, if you were with your wealthiest clients, what do you yeah. say that's different from the, the clients who aren't that wealthy and want to be wealthy? Well, the clients who aren't wealthy um, should, you know, what I've been worried about the last few years is a number of people have been speculating in crypto. But, you know, it's fine if you bought at 600 and it's at uh, 20. But you can't believe but it? People buying it. Listen, I, I think it's it's an asset, it's a speculative asset by definition. 
I don't think it's a new form of stored value. Um, I think it's subject to a lot of regulatory risk. But you own any? No, I don't own any. I wish I bought it at sixty. Well, of course we all do. I, but I'm <laughs> glad I didn't buy it at sixty thousand. Okay. So what I've been worried about, and what I've seen a lot of individual investors, is they got caught up in the hype. Right. We've seen this before. The dot com. We saw this in the early nineties, in the you know eighty seven with the Black Monday crash and so on. So my worry for that group is, listen, your job is not to speculate. It's to build long-term wealth for stability. The very wealthy person, completely different. They can put 1% of their money on anything. They can put on resources, right. put on crypto, put it on whatever they like. That's fine. That's no risk because they can afford to lose that. So completely different focus. But how about the young? We have a lot of young uh, watchers at 25, 30. Isn't this the time to start? The market's so nowhere near its top. You know, Australia has a scheme uh, called the superannuation scheme where government mandated you save 15% of your uh, income, right? And it's created these huge sovereign wealth fund asset pools in Australia. If there's one thing I could tell every 22-year-old person starting a job, maybe they can't save 15%, but save five. Okay. And the compounding impact of putting money into the market, maybe start with an index, just get in the market. But it's all about duration. You're in the market 50 years, it's better than 30, it's a whole lot better than 10. One last question, James Gorman is a little bit close to me in age. Uh, can you stay longer? How much <laughs> longer do you want to stay? Well, I, I, I truly believe in, in succession planning. Right. And I've been very clear with the board um, that you know these organizations do best when you regenerate right. and provide growth. And part of that is giving opportunities to people. So we've got a plan. Um, I won't give you the date right now, uh, but no, I'll, I'll step down at the right moment. But All right, I will step enough. down and we've got a great team to follow me. Well, I'm sure you but do, it's but, not today. It's, but you've done the best in the group. And it's that's a lot. I know fun. you have a great team, Thank but you. I'm looking at the top. Thanks, man. Okay, that's James Gorman, Chairman CEO of Morgan Stanley. Thank you so much, James. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Then, buddy, back to the break.